There are really two or three components to this, right? So one of the things that's happened is over the years, um, so-called experts going back 20 and 30 years um, started recommending against this. Uh, I, I believe that the, the origin for this was that the not terribly competent crossovers used 30 years ago tended to cross over quite high. And once you start doing that, putting it in a corner can really tend to exaggerate room boom. We, of course, do nothing of the kind. Our crossovers all start as low as 20 hertz. And I mean that it would be 20 hertz and below coming through that crossover. So we're operating in a very different sphere. The other thing that we do is um, it, it gets you more gain, more output, but that's not really why we're doing it. All the modern rails play extremely loud. When you use a corner, when you project from a corner across, First of all, you're towed in 45 degrees. We're not firing down the length of the room. We're towed in. Why do we do that? Because what we really want to do is get the longest throw distance from one corner to another. is about 30% typically longer, which means that we can extend that much deeper into the base before it hits a room boundary and folds back into the room. Getting that extremely deep base is really the, the primary focus of our engineers and designers. So the corner placement works really well. That's typical for a single, occasionally for a pair. When you start moving up into um, line arrays where we've got six, for example, uh, of either S's or a reference class, um, it's a very different game. And there you've got so much driven bass and amplifier power to throw at it that what you really want to do there is connect it up with the main speaker, get them so that their time signature is exactly linked. But for a single unit, when you're just starting off with a rail, that corner placement gives you the deepest, uh, really most comfortable low base, and also requires less amplifier power in order to generate it.